some more details on uh, Daily Bicentennial Plaza in North Grand Park. All right. So I'm Gia Biaggi, Director of Planning. Uh, I think we have some faces that I saw the last time we did this drill uh, and some new faces here. So thank you for coming out tonight. Uh, you know, I went back to my notes from the last time we had some major public meetings on the subject. And most of the things have surprisingly stayed the same, but a few obvious things have changed. So uh, what I'm going to do is just give you some updates, a little bit of overview where we're at in terms of schedule, what we're planning on doing tonight. Um, and then I'll turn it over to the design team um, who will talk you through uh, a presentation and then uh, we're going to break up just maybe one or, t or two or three groups to talk in smaller group settings so we can hear some feedback on some of the ideas we're going to present tonight. So, um, you know, we're, we're here to talk about the Daily Bicentennial Plaza area. And so, uh, in terms of what's changed from last time, we're just talking about Daily Bicentennial Plaza. Um, and that's the area that's uh, east of Columbus Drive, it's north of Monroe, south of Randolph, and west of Cancer Survivors Garden. So it's that rectangle. It's about a 20-acre rectangle that we're looking at. So like last time, why are we here? Why are we talking about a new park design? Uh, we're talking about it because we have a garage, an indoor garage, underneath that, that park. And the waterproofing membrane on the top of that garage, which is underneath the park, needs to be replaced, needs to be repaired. Now some of you who live in the area you probably noticed there's some repairs going on inside the garage right now. Um, and that was something we talked about that you might see happening um, over, let's see, I think we're a year and a half ago last time we were out here. And so they've done some of that work and we're getting close to the stage where they need to get on top of the park, replace that membrane. And so the challenge here is to put a park back, right? And so that, again, that's why we're here. Um, in terms of schedule, um, I, I uh, want to make sure I hit this pretty clearly. So we're looking at starting construction take out your pens, fall of 2012, okay? So fall of 2012, we're looking at putting a shovel in the ground on the top of the park. Now you may see some things happen prior to that, nothing major, we're, we're trying to work with a garage operator who is doing some tweaks on the interior there, but the big, the fences go up at when summer's over, fall 2012. So that's when demolition would start. Um, and so what, how long of a construction period are we talking about? This is a big and complicated project. So unfortunately, we're talking about two summers, two summers out of commission. So that's 2013 and 2014, that park is out of commission. I wish we could do it faster, we can't. To do it right, we can't. And there's a lot of coordination to do on this project between the garage and ourselves, so um, I want to be clear about that. So the goal is to open it for 2015, for summer 2015. There will be some spring plantings, we think, at this point in 2015, um, but that's how far around the calendar we're getting with this project. And so while this might seem a long ways away from fall of 2012, it's not. The process we have to do from here is we need to arrive at a design that we're all excited about and feel good about. And then that design, once we go from the, the pretty picture, and, and we're here to, sh to show you some real meat on the bone in terms of the ideas that we've got going for it, then we need to develop construction drawings. Then those need to go out to bid, plus there's coordination with the garage folks. Then it needs to be awarded, and all of that mobilization, before you know it, it's fall 2012. And so, really, the window is a lot tighter than it might seem. So, we're very interested in getting some, really having some rigorous conversation tonight, getting some really good feedback, um, because we would like to um, button up uh, the plan and, uh, and get it rolling onto its next phase. Uh, I think. I think Bob addressed this, but I, maybe I don't need to at this point, because um, my notes say, what's going on with the Children's Museum? Well, they're not coming to Grant Park. And so, um, for those of you who were with us on the first go-around, um, that was not intended to be a applause line. But, I mean, I think for us, what it means, it, it means a couple of things. One, it does, uh, we won't need to coordinate with a third entity, and so um, that, that is helpful and to the extent that there's only one other entity to coordinate with, and that's um, the parking garage folks. Um, it does mean, though, that part of that project meant that there was going to be a new field house as part of that, and that's really important. Um, we know very well that daily buy leaks, that it needs to function better than it does. Um, what we're doing here is uh, we have a very austere budget, which I'll get to in a second, um, but what we need to do here is um, a couple of things. One, we're, go we're identifying, and we've already identified to some extent, the scope of work we need to do to make the building stop leaking and do some interior improvements as, as you know, practically as we can, but we're not talking anything major. 
but we need to stop the major uh, we need to stop the major problems with leaking and make the building a, a little more operable, a little bit nicer. We are interested in looking at the facade of that building too, and in a way that it would relate better to the park um, and some of the design ideas that we have here. So it's a pretty light touch on the building aside from the major. It's got to stop leaking. It's got to be functional, and that's something that. Um, we're going to see if we can fit it into um, our larger capital improvement program <coughs> to try and fund that project. Um, so that's important. Um, okay. So let's talk about let's talk about budget a little bit. I have exactly the same line I gave a year and a half ago that I do today. Um, so we have a little over 30 million to do this project. Um, we essentially as, but that money comes from. Um, the revenue from the transfer of the parking garage to the city and then on to the, the private vendor of the garage. And so part of that exchange included a uh, set aside of, of about $35 million um, for this project. And that was based on, it's, it's years ago now, right? But it was based on essentially per square foot costs of, you know, you have so many, you know, linear feet of sidewalk, what would be the cost of that time of replacing it? So it's a number of roughly based on what was there, what is there now, and what, but, but with prices that are at least six years old now. Um, but it, it's certainly, um, it's, it's, it, we put the money in a piggy bank, it's been there ever since. So it started at 35 and then with design fees and a couple other things, we're just a little over 30 in terms of what we have available to build a park. Um, there's never enough money to build a park uh, if we can get it. Um, but so one of the things that we're interested in is as we go through this process tonight, to really hone in on what are the design elements that, that folks find compelling, really trying to push it toward a final plan. We're, we'll be continually kind of pricing things out, but we're really trying to keep as close to 35 as possible. Um, if it's the case that it's going to be over that, we would like to try and shop it around and see if anyone's interested in helping a partner on the project. We've been successful with that with other projects throughout the city. Um, we think this one is, has that magnitude of importance, but I just want to be very transparent with you. You know, we have a, we have a small budget, um, but I think there's a lot that we can do with it. And frankly, that's one of the reasons I'm really glad we have uh, Michael Van Valkenburg and Associates on board, because um, their work around the country and the world really um, is looking at how do you create really compelling, creative things, um, being practical, being maintainable, and not on a gangbuster budget, but on a budget on, on with the money that you have. And so I'm, I'm really excited for you to see their presentation today. Um, let me just, these are literally my notes from last time, so let me just see. Um, in terms of prior community process, so I, as I, I, obviously there's some familiar faces around who've been, who were through some of the process we did last time. So last time we had, um, we had four major public meetings. One was very large at the Spurtis. We had over 200 people attend. And then we did some meetings in the neighborhoods um, at South Shore Cultural Center, uh, Garfield Park, and Broadway Armory. So we kind of went north, west, and south. And just wanted to make sure that folks who live in other part of the, parts of the city or could get down downtown or what have you would have an opportunity to come out and talk um, and tell us what they were thinking. And so I think we, we did gain a lot, a lot of, a lot of valuable um, conversation and comments with all of those meetings. And then we also did some stakeholder meetings. So we um, convened smaller groups, folks like, like Richard Ward here, who we invited to come down and take a look at some of the ideas that, taking the ideas that we heard at the meetings and trying to render them, trying to, how can articulate those? What are some of the ideas that we think we could express in the design? And so we tried to get sort of smaller setting feedback as well. Um, and then we also, we did a survey. Um, we had a website, oh, we still do, it should be up again. Michael, I believe it's Michael's up. Um, so we have a website up and we got a lot of feedback <coughs> from the survey. And so what you'll see tonight is our attempt to be reflective of what we heard from you, what we heard online, what we heard sort of in, in that, you know, in the last couple of years about what people would like to see here. Um, and so tonight, you know, we're, I'm excited to have you take a look at it and give us your feedback on it. Um, so with that, you know, what I'd like to do is I'd like to introduce, uh, I think I've got Michael Van Valkenburg next, the gentleman, the gentleman in the back of the room. So if you can come on up, I think we're ready to do a presentation. So some of this will be, it's going to be a couple of things. Um, it'll be um, talking about the way we've been thinking about the park, talking about the feedback that we've received, and then really trying to show you some design ideas, because that's what we're here to get a reaction to. Yeah, we're, we're here to yeah. evolve it to the next, uh, next level. Yeah. Does this park have to be Go torn ahead, up in entirety talking. all at once, or could it be done uh, half at a time. Uh, I'm thinking of the wildlife in that park, and you're going to be doing this during migration season. 
Yeah, the most economical way is to tear it all up. You don't want to mobilize twice. <laughs> and with the budget that we have, we really can't afford to do multiple mobilizations. Believe me, we looked at actually cutting up into 16 different quadrants and then four. Um, I think at the most we would do is, is two, but it would be a, we'd never take down the construction fence. We would go from one section to the other. Um, and so, I mean, it's a great question because we've been scratching our heads about it, but I think where we are now is let's just get it all done as quickly as possible and, and do our best to do it. what will you do with the wildlife that's there? Uh, well, it's in terms of the wildlife that I can actually get my hands on, I mean, I certainly, we're very mindful of the migratory bird path setting. It's the same kind of conversation for those of you who've been involved in Northern Island. We're really mindful of it. Um, one of the things that we, we're happy to do is to work with Chicago Wilderness and other groups that want to give us input on how to manage that. Um, it is a short schedule, but there's certainly time for conversation about how to manage those guys. So with that, I want to introduce the Michael Van Valkenburg team. Oh, he's going to queue up the presentation. And I've got Michael. I'm in that boomer generation, I don't get the whole technology thing, so thank you, Scott. Um, well, first of all, I want to say it's, um, it's a great pleasure to be here this evening. Uh, my staff and I um, really learned a lot through the four public meetings that we <coughs> have had with, I'm sure many of you have recognized some people who have actually been um, at every one of the gatherings, um, so welcome. Um, and tonight is a... a the first time really that we have shown a pass at the design since the public meetings and that's a major um, agenda that we're um, we've set for tonight um, and I, I'm sure just to go over this again uh, that uh, that uh, Gia has covered this adequately for you but uh, there were some major adjustments for us in the work that we were doing with the changes uh, that are on the screen now uh, just want to make sure, uh, again for the group, to make sure that everybody understands where we are and where uh, and how the North Grant Park project falls within the programming of the rest of Grant Park. Uh, when designers of parks talk about programming, that's another word for activity areas. What kinds of activities will people doing, be doing there? And that's a major focus of the design for us this evening probably more so even than the design, which is in, is in a state of evolution. Um, we're um, at the very northernmost corner uh, of, of Grant Park, and uh, everybody knows the character of the site today, but just want to remind um, the audience that the approaches to this site are quite challenging. Uh, the garage is slightly elevated above the street level of the areas that are around it. And one of the major things that we're trying to do is to make sure that the design is constructed in a way that everybody feels very welcomed. And that welcoming takes a couple of forms. Uh, one is, of course, if we're completely universally accessible in terms of uh, ADA access and people who have limited mobility. Uh, but the other thing is that um, those people and everybody else want to have a visual sense of welcome. You want to be able to see deeply into the park. You don't want it to be too mysterious at the corners. You want to know what's up ahead. That's a major part of making an urban park feel welcoming. The edges are pretty big uh, in some areas, so the other thing that we're trying to do is to make sure where those edges are broad that the, uh, that the arrival points are generous and accommodating and, and don't feel squeezed and constrained or mysterious. Um, there is a lot of infrastructure on the site. Um, there is, of course, the issue of the relationship of Upper Randolph uh, to the park site. And then the other thing is that there are a series of garage vents um, across the site, which are a major design challenge. To have a park that's regularly interrupted with the, with the vents is um, something that we put a lot of effort onto. It was one of the things we heard about in the public process that people were concerned about. 